Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Today, we want to present about financial statement analysis of Tashleti Industri Berhad Our group consists of four members which are This, this is a background of Tashleti Industri Berhad Tashleti Industri Berhad is manufacturer company and dairies product in Malaysia since 1960. Previously, Dutch Lady Industry Berhad is under Royal Price Land Food. But in December 2008, Dutch Lady Industry Berhad was the subsidiary of Price Land Campina. Its current product is growing up milk, pasteurized milk, sterilized milk, family powder milk, and low fat yogurt. Okay, this was a product of Dutch Lady Industry Berhad. Regarding the task of financial statement analysis of Dutch Lady Industry Berhad, we are going to analyze three basic ratio, which are profitability ratio, liquidity ratio, and efficiency ratio. Okay, now let's focus on profitability ratios. Profitability ratios commonly used in analyzing the company's performance include gross profit margin, operating margin, return on asset, return on equity, return on sales, return on investment. But for this case, we only analyze three ratio, which are gross profit margin, net profit margin, and return on investment. For the gross profit margin, in year 2018, the gross profit margin gain is 39.7% and 2017, 37.68%. Which means for every 100 ringgit sales, the gross profit is 39 ringgit and 70 cents before deducting all expenses in 2018. While in 2017, the gross profit is 37 ringgit and 68 cents for before deducting all expenses. Gross profit margin tells us that how much a company will receive over 100 ringgit sales. So from this calculation and comparison, we can see that year 2018 earns more profit than 2017. This increment could be due to the sales increasing in sales volume without increasing in sales of goods sold per unit or lowering the selling price. For the second one, for net profit margin, in 2018, the net profit margin is 12.35% and for 2017, there are 11.65%. This is meant by for every 100 ringgit sales, the net profit is 12 ringgit and 35 cents after deducting all expenses for 2018 and 11 ringgit 65 cents for 2017 after deducting all expenses. There was an increase in the net profit, which means in 2018, the company gained more profit compared to 2017. This increment could be an increase due to increasing in selling price. Last but not least, return on investment. Return on investment for 2018 is 31.98%, which means for every 100 ringgit asset invested, the return from investment is 31 ringgit and 98 cents. For 2017, the return on investment gain are 30.01%, which means for every 100 ringgit asset invested, the return for the investment is 30 ringgit and 1 cent. Return on investment basically changed from one year to another. So from this comparability, there have been an increase in the return on investment from 2017 to 2018. This increasing on return investment depicts how well a business in managing its asset and converting this asset into a net income. Next is liquidity ratio. Liquidity refers to the liability of the company to meet its financial obligation. Liquidity ratio is the competition to measure the ability of the company to pay its short-term debt. First is current ratio. Current ratio tells the ability to pay the current liabilities using the current asset. Current ratio
ratio Current ratio for 2018 is 0.9521 for every one ringgit of the current liabilities, the company have 95 cent of the current asset to pay the liabilities when it is due. For 2017, the current ratio is 1.02 to 1. This is show that for every one ringgit of the current liabilities, the company have 1 ringgit and 2 cent of the current asset to pay the liabilities when it is due. In conclusion, this is show that in 2017, the company has more ability to repay the debt with compared to 2018. The higher the ratio, the, liquid, the more liquid the company considered to be. Second is asset test ratio. Asset test ratio also referred as quick ratio. Uh, this ratio shows the ability of the company to pay off the current debt without relying on the case of inventory. Asset test ratio for the company for 2018 is 0.49 to 1. For every 1 ringgit of the current liabilities, the company has 49 cents of the liquidity asset to cover the liabilities when it is due. For 2017, the asset ratio is 0.60. This show that for every one ringgit of the current liabilities, the company has 60 cents of the liquidity asset to repay the liabilities when it is due. The asset test ratio has decreased from 2017 to 2018. Uh, this change means the liquidity position of the company is worsening. So let's move on. To efficiency current ratio. Efficiency current ratio measures the company's ability to use their asset and manage their liability efficiently in the current period. Efficiency current ratio can be divided into two, which are inventory turnover ratio and also uh, average calculation period. So let's move on to the first part of efficiency ratio, which is inventory turnover ratio. Basically, inventory turnover ratio measures the company's ability to generate revenue from their assets. A higher, asset even, uh, a higher asset turnover ratio means a company is using their asset efficiently. Okay, so let's take a look for inventory turnover ratio for the industry high. In 2017, the inventory turnover ratio for the industries is 5.8 times, which, uh, which is means that the business will be able to replenish their stock 5 times in one accounting period, while for the two, uh, two, uh, 2018 is 5.12 times, which is the business will be able to replenish their stock 5 times in one accounting period. While for the lower asset turnover ratio means that the company is not using their asset efficiently. Now let's move on to the second part of efficiency ratio, which is average collection period. Average collection period is the amount of time taken by business to collect the payment owed by its client in terms of accounts global. It is to make sure the company has enough cash on hand to meet their financial obligation. Now let's take a look for average collection period for Dash Academy Industry Brand. In 2017, the company managed to collect all the money in in 2017 for 35.59 days, which is the company will be able to make collection from their credit customer within 35 days. And while for 2018, the company will be able to make collection from their credit customer within 39 days. Comparison, the company collects the debt from debtors in 2017 is shorter compared to the year 2018. In overall, the Shady in the Silver Heart has captured a good performance because most of the ratio show an increment from 2017 to 2018, except liquidity ratio. Other than that, this company also capable to pay back company's liability within the times given.